I always like to try and lead with the why and show you in Scripture why we do things that we do here at Journey Church. Uh, I, I'll explain the dancing later, uh, probably next week, because um, there's so much in the Word about dancing before the Lord. And um, so, but today we're going to talk about testimony. Testimony. So, Revelations chapter number 19. If you're there, say amen. If you're not, say hold up. You're good. It's in the back. I'll help. It's in the back. That's not to shame anybody. I'm just, I really am helping you get there. It's okay. I ain't going to lie. Ain't nothing like being a pastor at a pastor's conference, and they say turn to the book of the Bible, and you just brain fart, and you're like, Trying to find the page. Revelations chapter 19, verse 9 through 10. And the angel said to me, write this. Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these are the true words of God. Then I fell down at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, you must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers who hold to the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. You hear that? The testimony of Jesus. Worship God. And here's the last part. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Lord, I pray that you bless this word, this short uh, um, explanation on the why. And then, Lord, I pray that you would anoint our students. We've prayed over them. We've declared over them today, Lord God. And we know that as they stand here and give their testimony, Lord, their testimony in the spirit of prophecy, Lord God, lives are going to be changed today. So we love you and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. So I just wanted to explain just for a moment. What's happened is John the Revelator has now seen visions of heaven. He's on the island of Patmos. He's began to see revelations of what heaven is going to look like, and he's been told to write all of these things down. And at one point, he goes to bow down before the angel to worship the angel that is declaring these things to him. And the angel goes, time out, stand up. I'm a fellow servant just like you. Today, as students stand before you, they are fellow servants of Jesus as they declare the testimony of Jesus. So what is the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy? What is that, Pastor? What that is, is saying that as we tell testimonies of what God has done in our lives, it is to share the goodness of who he is. We are prophesying about the goodness of the Lord and how wonderful he is. So as I'm sharing my testimony, as I'm turning these things out, it shouldn't turn praise to me. It should turn praise to him. This is why we tell you so many times to share your testimony with people. Because there is power in it. Because it is a spirit of prophecy on your testimony. So point number one, it is a spirit of prophecy. Your testimony is. Students, what you're going to do today is prophesy about how good the Lord is and what he's done in your life. You are declaring what the Lord has done before and that he will be faithful to do it again. That's the prophetic part of it. He's already done it once. He's going to do it again. I might not be the first person it's ever happened to, but I definitely know I will not be the last person this is going to happen to. So as I share my testimony with you and begin to lay it out, what it's doing is telling someone in the room or someone that is listening that God is good, he is faithful, and he will do it again. This is why sharing your testimony is important. When you're telling someone about Jesus and you're sharing your testimony, they begin to receive hope that change can happen in their lives as well. You're literally prophesying an outcome to their story if they would just hope in Jesus. When you share your testimony with someone, as students share theirs today, they are declaring that what is going on in your life, there is hope in the end. There is hope in the end. You're going to hear some things today that is going to blow your mind. But I want you to not just be mind blown. I want you to go, Lord, I want that to be my story. I want that to be my testimony. Number two, it's evidence. Your testimony is evidence. You'll hear from these, stu the, these students that and what they share with you will, will let you know that God is real. It will present evidence to you that you won't have, 
uh, that what you have gone through, he can heal and redeem. That the Lord sees you where you are. You hear so many times from students now that, like, I just felt alone. I felt not seen. I felt this. I felt that. So many adults. We just, we just ain't brave enough to admit it. We just cover it up with our adultism. But what you're going to hear today will be evidence. It will present to you that the Spirit is still moving and speaking to people. That he knows the deepest places of your heart and he will heal those places. Then, when your life that you live after the encounter is so different, students, the evidence is in how you live from this moment forward. He did some incredible things this week, but some of your parents are like, who is this kid? Let them see that kid, not the one that left for camp. That man, that person, that lady doesn't have to come back. You took that off and laid it at the altar, and you put on a garment of praise. You picked up beauty for ashes. You became a new creation in Christ Jesus, and now all that you experienced is real, and it happened, and now the life that you live is evidence to everyone around you. Mm, come on, somebody. Now, number three, the testimony of Jesus gives us insight to his character and who he is. When we declare what God is doing for us, it is giving people around us insight to his character and who he is. John chapter 4, the woman at the well, a very familiar passage of scripture. Jesus is at the well at a random hour, but he knew he needed to be there because a lady came to the well because she was so ashamed of the life that she was living that she had to go at a time no one else was there. And Jesus said, who, who, who is that... Um, who do you live with? Who's, who's your husband? And she's like, um, well, I've been married like four times, but the one I'm living with ain't even my husband. And so he's declaring these things to her, sharing these things with her, and it absolutely radically changes her life. And here's what she does in John chapter 4, verse 39. Many Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me all that I ever did, but in a way she said it to let them know, but he didn't hold it against me. He told me all I ever did, but he offered me a better way. And so now the character of Jesus is revealed through this woman that everyone else in the town shunned her, but this man came along and said, I know exactly what you've done, but I want to give you a drink of living water. You'll never thirst again. You've been seeking something. I've got what you're looking for. Let me give it to you. You share the character of who Jesus is when you share your testimony. And then once they went back, they, it even says, and many more believed because of, um, hold on just a second. All right, here we go. Verse 42. They said to the woman, it is no longer because of what you have said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves. And we know that this is indeed the Savior of the world. What you're going to hear today is going to intrigue you to lean into the Lord. But then once you lean into the Lord, he's going to reveal himself to you today. You don't have to vicariously live through their testimony. He wants it to be your testimony too. He wants it to be your testimony. So today as we hear these stories, yes, we celebrate the students for being courageous. We're going to cheer them on. If they cry, we're going to cry with them. Y'all best believe your pastor's going to be down there like a baby. Just <laughs> we've, we've already cried enough tears this week, right, guys? I don't know if we have any more in our eye ducts left, but that's okay. But we're going to celebrate them being courageous enough to stand before you and declare all that God has done. But we truly celebrate all that the Lord has done in their lives, and we remember he is the one that did it. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit. We look to the one that these testimonies declare the goodness of. We don't look to the one making the declaration, but we look to the one who is being declared about. We turn our focus and our gaze to the Lord. And we say, Lord, you are so good, and we celebrate you today. So here's what I'm going to have happen. Pastor Jack is going to come. He's going to stand up here. He's going to call students up. They're going to begin to share their testimony. They've written them out. They've rehearsed them 27,000 times. Some of you parents have probably already heard it five times. That's okay. But we're going to allow, listen, now listen. Listen to me, church. This is not just a moment to check a box and say, well, we came back from camp and we just let our kids talk so that we could move on and have a different service. I believe there is power in testimony. That's why I taught on it first. Do not look at this and go, it's just students standing on a stage talking. No, they are declaring the gospel today. They are sharing the goodness of the Lord. And it doesn't just have to be a pastor that does it all the time. 
I want you to also know that you can be empowered with your testimony to see people come to know Jesus. So Pastor Jack, can we give it up for Pastor Jack and Pastor Katie? Tearing it up. Hey, hey. Y'all ready? Sweet. I just wanted to say two things real quick. Number one, uh, as we were prepping for camp this year, I felt the need to really, like, emphasize the prep before we go. Uh, as I, got, I went to camp two weeks ago, and there was a lot of just, like, spiritual battling that was taking place. And, like, uh, like kids were really fighting. And it was, re- like, as you stood in the room, you felt tension in the room of these kids trying to connect with God but also not wanting to. And so we began praying, we began believing. Uh, We asked some of our uh, older students to fast with us the week before we left. And uh, I'm glad we did because as me and Miss Katie are packing on Saturday, or is it Sunday night? Packing on Sunday night, all of a sudden we hear rain outside and we're like, we didn't know it was raining. And, And then eventually, obviously storm hits, power goes out, gets really hot. And we look at each other, it's like, man, Something powerful is about to happen this week. And so uh, we got kids texting us, yo, my clothes ain't even dry. Like, I ain't got. <laughs> One of them actually was like, uh, Pastor Jack, I don't know what to do. There's a tree blocking me. I can't even get home. And I was like, you better start walking, son, because. <laughs> so we get, everybody gets up here. We get on the road. We ain't even to Jackson yet. And if you don't know the story already, one of the wheels, our tires on our uh, people mover exploded, smacked the mess out of our van, broke our wind, uh, windshield wiper, and then we had to pull off to the side, and we were there for at least two and a half hours on the side of the road waiting for someone. And then at that same time, we just began looking at each other, and we we're like, yo, something really about to happen this week. Like, so we battled. I can 100% tell you it was worth it. They're going to share their stories. And I wish you could have been there. And to stand there and watch them. It's so easy. It's so easy to watch these kids down here jumping up and down go, man, that's cool. But it ain't hype. It's holy. you don't know what God did in their life. I watch kids walk in there who could care less about church, care less about God. And to see the smiles on their faces. It's a joy that don't come from anything this world has. It's a joy that truly comes from being in the presence of God. I had a student look at me and said, man, why do I love this so much? And I was able to look at him and be like, because you were created for this. And each and every single one of us were created to be in his presence. So I'll say all that. We had one student willing to step up and ask to go first. So can y'all give it up for Mr. Zion Mandel? <laughs> Y'all can all hear me? Y'all can all hear me okay? Okay. Um, I'm just going to go and say I'm already, like, just kind of emotional being up here, so just just stick with me here. Um, okay. So this, uh, for those of you who don't know, my name is Zion, and this was my ninth year going to camp, I believe. Um, and I can say I was probably most looking forward to this year at camp because, uh, for those of you who don't know, the theme was experience, and I knew I didn't just need to experience the Lord, but I wanted to, um, because the place that I was in, I, I knew I just needed, I needed Jesus right, right now in this time, and, um, so before I went into camp, I, I was really caught up in living by the ways of the world, and, um, for me, that looked like there were certain things in my life I felt like I could not live without, there were certain friendships I had that I felt that I couldn't break off because I would be alone if, you know, I cut them off. I wouldn't have anyone else around me. And can I tell you what I found at at camp this week? 
is that those are all lies from the devil. And that there is freedom. There's so much freedom when you just lay your life down in front of the Lord and give him your yes. And that you're not alone and that God never left you and that he's been there the whole time. And so um, on the first night of camp, I, I knew I was, I was just going to go all in. I was going to pour everything out for him, um, even if I didn't know why or, you know, what exactly I was praying for. I was just going to go all in. Um, and on the first night, there were kids who were already crying. There were kids who were already being laid out. Um, and I wasn't. I, it didn't really hit me on the first night. But I kept going. And it was on the second night um, that they gave the altar call. And honestly, I'm, I don't even remember what it was. I just know I went down there because I wanted it. Um, actually, I believe it was about freedom, um, having chains broken off of your life. Um, and so when I went down there, I had my hands raised. I was standing up, and for a while, I was asking God just to break stuff off my life, to to set me free and to change me. And um, Pastor Brooks said something that kind of hit me. He said, sometimes we get so caught up in asking God to do stuff for us when we just need to ask for God. We don't always need to ask. We don't need, always need to ask him to change stuff, to do stuff for us. Sometimes we just need to ask for God, and that's when real change will take place. And so I, I found myself get on my knees on the ground, and I just started to cry. And for the first time in 17 years, I, I said, yes. I said, I don't care what it is. Yes, I don't care what it sounds like. Yes, I don't, I don't care. Yes, yes. That's, I, I stopped asking. I stopped asking God to come into my life and fix stuff. I just said, yes. I said, Jesus, I want you. Yes. And it was in that moment. It was in that moment that I felt God touch my life. And he broke stuff off me that I've had attached to me for such a long time. And it's all because I said yes. But that's not that's not where it ends. Um, you know, the following night, um, Pastor Jack had told me um, the place that I was kneeling at, um, I didn't even notice it because I was so busy crying on the floor for, it was a good, like, 45 minutes. Yeah. It was, it was a minute. Um, um, he told me that the place I was kneeling at, the word seen was written in oil right where I was kneeling. And God, he saw me, and he came and he touched me. And then on the last night of camp, um, they were anointing students with oil. And, um, you know, I, I was praying over some of the other students as well. But something that's commonly said at camp is let's just seal this moment, let's seal the last night, just seal it. And so I, I kind of broke away from praying over the other students and I just wanted to focus on myself and I just wanted to seal the moment with God. And it was in that moment that I, I laid down on my face and that's when I told God, I said, I've been set free now and now I just want to give you thanks for that. And in giving him thanks for that, that's when I gave him my forever yes and I said, I'm saying yes to you until the day that my lungs give out, and I'm following you until the day my lungs give out. And um, after service had ended that night, they, uh, you know, they dismissed everyone to go get their concessions and whatnot. And I just went back to my seat, and um, I, I couldn't leave. And I started to cry. And there were a couple of students who were around me, but I just started to cry. And it wasn't because I was sad about anything. It, it wasn't because I was emotional from service. It was because I had so much realization. I had so much realization that even though all those years I spent running from God, saying no to him, turning away from him, turning away from the people who had tried to lead me back to Christ, after even after all those times I said no to Jesus, when I finally decided to give him my yes, he was standing right there and he was waiting for me. He was waiting for me, and he wasn't mad at me. He wasn't mad at me. He wasn't ashamed of me. He was waiting for me to come home, and he had open arms, and he said, welcome home. And he was, he was waiting for me the whole time. And I also, um, I got realization that, um, you know, sometimes you hear pastors say, like, when someone is saved, they can tell you exactly where they were, exactly what they were wearing, you know, what time it was. And I also, it, I got realization that I was seeing in that moment right there that at about 10.30 p.m. 
at Camp Jackson wearing this shirt and a pair of black and white Nike shorts and these Birkenstocks, I was laying on my face, and that's the moment I decided to give my life to Jesus forever. Um, and so I, I just want to say to anyone else in the room who might be struggling with bowing to the things of this world, it might not be the same thing as me, but you know, sin is sin, and bowing to the things of this world is difficult. I just want to say again that those are all lies from the devil and that there is true freedom. And if you've tried to ask for freedom before and you didn't feel like you had a breakthrough and you just feel like you weren't really heard or seen by God, I would just encourage you to just stop asking stop asking for him to do something for you and just ask for him and maybe you just need to literally lay on your face before him and cry out to God and I promise you that's when your life will change forever. Seth, Mr. Tepker, come on up here. Oh, what's up, y'all? I'm Joseph. Uh, some of y'all may know me, some of you may not, but uh, I also may get emotional. Just bear with me. Uh, all right, so I just want to give a backstory. Um, I came into the camp, like, with a... Uh, guilt for some things I've done and uh, a little bit of anxiety going into the future. And um, yeah, I just want to say that. Just keep that in mind when I tell you this. But um, so I got to camp and uh, first night didn't do much for me, unfortunately. But it, it was really when I got this uh, Wednesday, it was Holy Spirit night. But the whole day, I don't know if my friends noticed it or not, but I know Joe asked me if I was good. But I was in like a depressive mood almost, and uh, I just kept telling him I was I was just I'm tired I'm good, but it was because the devil had been putting lies into me the whole freaking night talking about the Holy Spirit wasn't real in my life, and the tongues that I thought I had wasn't real, but um I, I kind of believed it. So going into that night, it was Holy Spirit night, so I talked to uh, Dan about it because I know he. He's like a prayer machine, a prayer machine, and uh, so I was trying to just talk to somebody about it because I didn't want to keep it in. And uh, he said, "Let's go, to Pastor Jack, about it." So we went to him, and then um, Pastor Jack declared over my life that it was indeed real. It was indeed real, and nothing about that could could be fake. And uh, hold on, <laughs> sorry, nothing about it could be fake. And so we prayed. And um, I just had hands all over me. I didn't even know who they were. It I, I, was just random people. And then I got laid out in the spirit, and I just felt a peace so calming that I did not want to leave it. And just in that moment, I felt all my anxiety, all my fear, all my lies, everything. It was just gone. <laughs> it was gone. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I got up, and at that moment, I just felt like, like free I just felt light I felt like I could jump around like on a moon or something and I don't know but um hold on let me look at my notes again <laughs> um. oh okay so like uh basically after that it came to the uh the end of the night close to it and I know me and Lee we're just praying for people, and I just felt a freedom that I've never felt before, and I'm just glad I changed my or God changed my life, and uh, gave me a peace that I didn't know I could have because over my card we wrote at the beginning of camp what we wanted God to do in our lives, and I put I wanted Him to uh, bring peace over me and my family, and He did that tenfold. So I'm just thankful for that. But yeah, thank y'all. Becca, come on. Hello. There's a lot of 
taste it. Um, my voice is kind of gone, so please bear with me. <laughs> I may cry. It just happens. But anyways, I've been, I've been to camp a lot. <laughs> I've been to camp a lot of times in my life, and this one was just so different. I, like he said, we prepared, we fasted, and this bunch, they were ready. <laughs> they were ready for God. Uh, we didn't wait for the right song to come on. We didn't wait for the worship leader to lead us. That we just came with an expecting heart, believing God, and that we were going to receive him, that we were, we were going to go all out for him. And I just want to say that if you do that every single time, that you want God, if you're alone or if you're with a bunch of people at a church or if you're just in your car or whatever, like if you just want God, that he's gonna come. I have a little, this is kind of just some pointers, I guess, that uh, like have, that I got over the week. But number one, stop playing church. A lot of people on the stage they also gave their testimonies, and a lot of them were like, I was raised in church, and I was playing church. We can play church a lot. I was raised in church. A lot of people that have been here for a while, they know me because I was raised here. <laughs> and sometimes when you go through church, it gets boring it, because you're going through the motions of it. You don't truly understand what you're saying, what you're believing in. But once you understand once you understand who God is and when you say, I want you alone, I want my heart to burn for you, God, that is when, that is when it changes. I'm not sure who it was. I think it was Miss Heather or something, but we learned to praise God. We learned that praise is a, it could be a dance. Praise, you can use your voice. And third is a musical instrument. And it's so free. Sometimes when you have something inside, whether it's good or bad, you just need to let it out. Whether it's a yell, and you just yell out to God, it's freeing inside. And what you put into it, you get out of it. If you don't do nothing, don't expect nothing, okay? Okay? You, you can't just be like, hey, God, I want all of you when you ain't gonna give yourself to him. On the first night, I I was jumping around, I was praising God and stuff, but my heart wasn't in it. One inter came up to me and was like, and she said, God said, I knew she was gonna be here. I knew she was gonna be here tonight. And she said that God loves me and that he's smiling at me. Sometimes I don't feel like God sees me because just because I don't feel him, but that does not mean that he has lost sight of you. That does not mean that he has just looked away from you. Third thing is, my purpose is to be out of speak. Pastor Aubrey, I thank you. Because one morning chapel, he preached about being out of speak, that your purpose is to be out of speak. And I said, when he was preaching, I said, God, I'm going to be at your feet. That's where you're going to find me. I'm not going to be somewhere else. I'm not going to be distracted, trying to do my own thing. But God, you're going to find me on my knees. And also, my purpose isn't lost because of the things I've done or the things I've said or who else, like, or someone else I thought that I was. I'll say that. I've struggled with my identity. I thought like I have a lot of friends that are homosexual, and like when you're not, when not, when you're not in the word, and you start listening to everyone else that's trying to talk to you about what they think, what they like, their opinions, it gets in your head. And so I struggle with homosexuality. I didn't. I wasn't ever going to like date someone, but the thoughts of it, I was like, well, maybe, just maybe. So when you start to question yourself, that's when you get confused. When you don't know who you are and you don't claim who you are, that's when you start getting confused. Anyways. God 
is who he says he is. I mean, like I said, I was growing up in church. They say God is good. God is faithful. God is this and this and this and stuff. But once you see it, once you witness it, once you experience it, then that's it's just it's so good. <laughs> oh, God, he's good. Anyways. I'd just go through another cycle again. I mean, I wanted to, like, I was trying to believe that, like, after this camp, I'm going to be changed forever. But all the past years, I went through a cycle. I went, I came heavy brooding to camp. I experienced God. And then I was like, yeah, God, you changed me forever. And then three weeks later, not even that, I was, I was back to where I was. And so I had that fear inside of me. But there was this one song, and it was kind of playing today, too, because they had our camp playlist, thank God. Anyways. <laughs> um, it said, fear is not my future, you are. It said, heartbreak is not my home, you are. Sickness is not my story, you are. And that death is not the end, and you are. And so I'd just like to say that when that fear comes, when that fear comes, you declare over your life and you look to God and that you won't see that fear. You won't even feel it because you are so in love with him. You are so in love with him and he'll keep you past straight. He will. And the last thing is, is don't mourn over like the lost things of, like that you lost in this world. This world ain't gonna feel you. Like it's just, it's just not, it, do, it doesn't compare to God. And so you look to what he has for you and who he is. So, thank you. Natalie. Come on, girl. Millington. Hello, guys. There's a lot of y'all. <laughs> okay, um, so before camp, I had a lot of doubts in my mind saying, I live for someone that I don't even know is real. Um, try not to sin, missing out on a lot of fun because I didn't believe in him. Well, I did, but it wasn't it wasn't all there. And um, the 
first night, it didn't really get to me. Uh, I worshiped, and um, but it didn't really hit me like it usually does at camp. Um, sorry. But uh, day four, it really hit me. Um, on the worship night, uh, going around and being able to pray for everybody else. Like Seth said, me and him, we went and we prayed for a lot of people, and uh, it really hit me being able to, because I had prayed to God and asked him to use me as a vessel and uh, put his word into me, and I prayed for other people, and he did, and um, it felt amazing, especially being proved wrong by him and him showing me that he is real, and seeing everybody get laid out and me thinking to myself, no, that's not me. I could, yeah, that would never happen to me. But uh, I remember just one person putting their hand on me, and then next thing you know, it's like 12 people. And uh, I don't really remember who, but Daniel, and he's just amazing when he's praying in your ear. And when he was, when he was praying for me, I started crying so hard. And I remember just, it just hit me, and I got laid out. never really I grew up in church but faking church that message really hit me and um sitting up there up top listening to the preacher pray or preacher preach it really never hit me I really was just thinking about like where are we going out to eat after or something you know <laughs> and then like Pastor Aubrey and Pastor Jacob Pastor Jacob really hit me with the message that said um are you really in it for God, or do you want a hell out of free card? That really hit me. And um, I had asked Pastor Jack a question like that a while back ago, and um, he answered it that night, Pastor Jacob did. And then um, he said, sin is only pre pleasurable for a season, and that really stuck with me a lot. That was the first time I really listened to preachers preach, and it really hit me dead in my heart, and God really spoke to me that night. I just want to say, um, if you don't think God is with you, he is. In times that you don't think you're strong enough, he gives you the strength, and um, you can do all things through him. Yeah, come on. It is a lot of y'all. I ain't even gonna lie. Uh, this was kind of freestyled, but it's in the notes. Uh, gonna go ahead and pull that out for y'all. Um, how we doing though? How we doing? To be honest with you guys, I really don't know how to begin, but I know camp was truly a life-changing experience. I've been going for the past three years, but this so far has been the best. It felt different, it felt surreal. The games were fun and all, but I'm telling you, finding God and touching God the way I did was truly the experience. He moved through me multiple nights. I felt the love of him and everyone else. He showed me that I'm actually good enough to receive his unconditional love. He is worth it. He also moved through me with people and what they said or did mainly Pastor Jack, and I appreciate everyone that prayed for me. That's real love. I confessed all my sins, and afterwards I felt so cleansed and washed by the Holy Spirit. I cried out to him about all my problems, and the main one was my dad's absence and how I didn't want to be like him. But as much as I don't want to be like him, I still love him, and his absence affected me. Thursday night of camp was the night I cried about that very problem. Pastor Jack was praying for me, and I told him about my dad, and I broke down. I appreciate what you said, Pastor Jack. It means a lot. I really love you, and you're like family to me. <sighs> Next day we come back from camp and we got our phones back. My mom told me that my dad was coming to see us. I cried as soon as I read it because the night before, I, you know, I was crying about that. I saw my dad for the first time in a long time. 
God worked a miracle. Because of that, I'll never question God again. I truly want to change. I know it'll be a journey. I know some days will be hard, but I, but since I know I have God, my problems will never feel like too much. I'm glad God has put me through the positive and negative because without it, I wouldn't be who I am today. I felt God's touch, and it's very real. Very, very real. He wants every single one of us. I'm truly proud to have and serve a Lord like him. I want to share his love with people that may not know him. Things, thing is, I haven't even cracked the surface. There's so much more. I look forward to this journey as I will walk with the Lord, and I can't wait to see what he does for me in my life. This week has truly changed my life and has strengthened my relationship with God. You can honestly say that this was the best week of my life. I had fun with, it, I had fun with bonding with everyone. Journey Youth is my family, and I love every single one of y'all. Y'all mean, y'all mean so much to me. I feel, I feel so changed, y'all. Like, I just love God so much, and he's really opened my eyes. All you need to do is say yes to Jesus. He will deliver for you. Like Zion said, don't ask for things he can do for you. Just ask for him, and he will deliver. If I can say yes to Jesus, I know y'all can. His touch is so real, and I thank every single one of y'all for allowing me to share this because he really touched me. Like, Sophia. Sophie, come on up here. My name's Sophia, and um, I want to tell you all what like, God did for me like during camp. So... This is my first year going to Camp Jackson, and I haven't really gone to this church. It hasn't even been a year. Like, it's coming up to a year come being here with everybody. And um, I have re- I had really bad anxiety. Like, I had bad, really bad anxiety about coming to camp. But I pushed through, and I'm glad I pushed th- through. And um, not long ago, my dad, he ended up in the hospital in surgery. Yeah, like almost that. And <laughs> and, and, and like that made my anxiety worse. Like I doubted everything around me. And it was hard. And then my Aunt April, she invited us to go to church and um it, like it like changed but like I had more faith. My anxiety was, like, still there, and it was bad, and, like, people, people were, like, really hard, and, like, on me, but, which made my anxiety, like, really bad, and, um, so, I, I ended up going to camp, and, um, I go to camp, and the first night, it was, like, my anxiety got really bad. Like, I felt like there were too many people around, and I just break down. I start crying. I have to go to the back and everything. And Miss Nancy just sits back there with me with Miss Katie, and I'm shaking, and I just sit back there the whole worship time. And then the second night, um, I go up there to the altar call, and um, I go up there to the altar call, call and um, I just like lay it all down at his feet. It was like nothing else mattered. Like I didn't, like I didn't even feel nobody else around me. Like I didn't hear nobody. It was just me and him. And then um, the third night. Uh, it was one song, and it, part of the song was like, it said, everything's 
changed. It was getting harder to recognize myself, the person I was for was before I encountered Christ. And um, that song, like, made me break down. And then Miss Katie, Miss Misty, and I don't know who else, they just came and prayed over me. And, like, I just, like, felt, like, the overwhelmingness of the Holy Spirit. But, like, I would not let it enter me. Like, I was, it was like I was fighting. And it was like I didn't know if I was supposed to. or if I, And I didn't know if I was what I was doing. And I just gave up, and I just let it happen. And then the main thing I asked for was, like, my anxiety to go away. But, like, it, that, like, that's not what I mainly wanted. I wanted him because I, like, it, like, just, like, I didn't, I didn't know if I wanted him or not until camp. It was that night whenever it first happened, that's whenever it was like, I need something more than myself. I can't sit there and think to myself that I can think, sit there and help myself. So I need something more. I didn't need nothing else. I didn't need a person. I need him. And it, like, it took me a while to realize that. So that's what I asked for. And then um, Michaela, she came up there and prayed for me. But like, it wasn't like she asked me. She was like, um, she was like, I, I wanted to pray for you, but I feel like there's a certain reason, there's a certain thing I need to pray for you about. But like, what is it? And I told her, it took me a while to say it, but it was like anxiety. And she, I don't remember anything she said. <laughs> I have no clue what she said, but she prayed for me, and then it happened again. It, like, uh, the overwhelmness of the Holy Spirit happened again, but I want to say, like, there's nothing he can't do. Like, anxiety, depression, fear, and anything like that, he'll beat it for you if you just ask him, but it's like, you have to ask him for him, but he can do it. You, you don't have to be very specific and but you have to declare it you can't just keep it in your head you have to declare it for him to do it and I want to just thank everybody for like being there for me I want to thank my aunt April for bringing us to this church I want to thank my mom and dad who were there for me even in the times whenever I couldn't talk to them but, like, mostly I want to thank God because he was there whenever I thought he wasn't there. And I'm glad I came to the church, and I'm glad I came to camp. And thank you for listening. As she's coming up here, I do want to say something after that. You have no clue whose life will be impacted by saying yes to Jesus and inviting people to come to church. She just shared that her aunt was willing to say, hey, I want y'all to come. And look at the life that was changed because of it. stop smiling. The second day, I was so excited. I smiled the entire day, asking everybody, y'all, y'all ready for this? <laughs> I, I cried so much that day. It was an emotional roller coaster. I felt him. He was right by my side, and so was my Nana. I could feel their presence beside me. I gave him what I thought was all of me, but only ended up being a little bit. I was still holding so much in. 
That night, whenever I laid down to go to bed, I still felt it. The third night, it wasn't my night, but when we got back to the cabin, me, Miss Katie, Coach Misty, Bear, and Aaliyah and Lexi, all of us were outside the cabin talking, and I was like, guys, I'd be so scared to get slain because I'd be scared that something went wrong. And that night, the Lord gave me a dream, and it was a big open area. It was like the the sunset, it was really pretty, and the horizon, it was like, I don't even know how to describe it to y'all, <laughs> but I was looking around, and there was like a bright light in one little area, and I could feel him, like he was, he was there, I could feel him, I could see him, I just couldn't see him, you know, and the fourth day, morning chapel, I was saying my heart out, and I went back to the place where I was in my dream the night before, it was so pretty, and Michaela came up to me, and she said, Katie, you're holding on to something, one thing, give it to him. She doesn't remember telling me that uh, because he was talking to her. I told him, <laughs> I told him that I give it all to you, and I ask for his help because it's not easy. I let negative thoughts take over my head so easily. I asked for his help, and I felt some of it leave, but something still did not feel right. So I walked around, and I felt something touch me, like a person. I jumped, and I was like, oh. And so I touched Pastor T. And I was like, bro, that was kind of scary. <laughs> I told him about my dream the night, the morning before, and I also told him about the, uh, yeah, you know. And I told him what Michaela said, and I was like, how do I give it all to him? And he said, it's not really an action. It's just by you telling him, I give it all to you, and he will help you do all the rest. He said he wanted to pray for me. So when he started, my whole body started shaking. And I was like, bro, what is this man doing? <laughs> I was so scared. And my body started shaking, and that's how powerful God was. He was overwhelming my body, so I ended up on the floor. God slain me because he wanted to see me. He wanted all of me. And I ended up with a, in, like, a big area, like in the movies, you know, like where there are a whole bunch of doors where you're, like, in your subconscious. I was there, and I was, like, kind of looking. I was, like, looking at him because the Lord was, like, he was right there. I was, like, bro, what, what are we doing? <laughs> and he was, like, it's all right. You're safe. I could I could feel your fear. I could sense it. You're under my wing. I'm not gonna let nothing happen. And I asked. I was like, bro, you know which door is locked? You don't know which one's open. And he was like, yeah, it's that one right there. And so we went to it and it did not budge. Pastor T said, oh, tell him to open it. And I was like, bro, how did you know where we were at? Because Pastor T was not there. He was just praying over me. And so I yelled. I said, I give it to you and open the door. I give you permission. And then we opened the door together. And when he opened, when we opened it, he started shouting and jumping and saying, yes, my child, and smiling, and he was jumping around. It was the same area in my dream, but it was dark and gloomy. He, t he was dancing and jumping, and he took away all the gloominess and darkness, and it looked just like it did in my dream. It was beautiful. And he said, my beautiful daughter, it's time for you to go home. I woke up, and when I woke up, Pastor G was waiting for me, and he asked what happened, so I told him. I got up, and I just stood there shaking and crying because of how overwhelmed I was. Becca and Katie was uh, right there praying for me and saying how proud and happy they were for me. When I got up, I felt relief. I knew he took it. It was my fear, my anxiety, my worrying, my anger, my sadness. He took it all. It's still going to be hard some days, but he's there for me. His work and love is like no other. He's so worthy and loving. He's incredible. I felt so relaxed and relieved. If you open up to him, he will respond. He will relieve you in what you're struggling with. When I left this week, I didn't know what half the stuff was that I learned this week. And I was like, all right. One of the guys in the group, I think it was Jay, he said, if you put work in, you will get something in return. And that stayed with me. So that pretty much means if you, like, whether you praise him, whether you surrender to him, anything that you do for him, he will do something for you in return. And the Lord is so great. He has something in store for everyone in this room. He knows how special you are. You are perfect in his eyes. He created you just how y'all are. He wants the good and the bad, not just bits and pieces. He wanted all of you just like how he wanted all of me. Jonathan, let's go, oh boy. No one made me lose more sleep this week than John. I'm just kidding. Um, wow, there's a lot of y'all. Um, but good morning. My name is Jonathan Matthews, and I'll be telling you my testimony of what happened at Camp Jackson. First of all, I want to thank God for putting me on this stage in the first place. And second of all, I want to thank Miss Sheila Perry over there. Um, 
a year and a half ago, she asked me and my mom to come to this church, and we have not stopped coming ever since. And I wouldn't have known any of y'all or been good friends with any of y'all if it wasn't for Miss Sheila. So I thank you, Miss Sheila. Um, I was going to use my phone and read my notes, but I'm going to just speak from the heart. And I hope, just bear with me here. Um, Camp Jackson was amazing. And the games were fun and all, but the service and worship was way better. Um, I have played church for a long, long time. And, you know, like somebody said earlier, it's just like going through the motions. And you get used to it, and it gets boring. And so I've been I've been just playing around with it. It's like, oh, okay, when do I, it's like what Lisa earlier, what are we getting after we, after we leave? Or, you know, I just want to go home and play on my game. But it's way more than that. And I realized that at camp. And so the first night, I was like, oh, this is going to be so boring. And, you know, I wasn't really getting into it. But the second night, that's when everything changed and I mean everything um I got laid out and it was like a dream I had almost it was like I see God and he's on the basketball court dribbling <laughs> and it's like I come to the court and he like bounced past me the ball and he says check up and once I get the ball I wake up and then I realize how amazing God is and then the second night I get laid, and then the third night I get laid out again, and he's like, and then I'm just walking with him. I'm just having a conversation with him about how I've had these emotions bottled up for so long, and I just needed to talk to somebody about it, and I talked to Pastor Timothy about it. I talked to Pastor Timothy about it, and if y'all need somebody to talk to, go talk to that man right there. He will talk to you about any and everything. He is just so great to talk to, and, um, you know, my camp experience was amazing with every last one of y'all, especially Dan. Um, he was right. If y'all need somebody pray for you, go to him. Just amazing, great. And, um, well, <laughs> that's it. Thank you. My name is Jonathan Matthews. Daniel, come on. I think everybody in our group got prayed by Dan. Like, <laughs> uh, good morning, all y'all. Um, my name is Daniel Noon, and I grew up in church. Uh, had an amazing teacher in Sheila Perry. Um, had an amazing kids pastor and Pastor T when he was still back there, and with Pastor Sam. And my testimony really starts, my first real encounter with God started my first year at kids camp. And it was Wednesday, I believe, so it was Holy Spirit night at camp. It's the night before we leave. And I remember I was praying with Pastor Sam that night. And he was telling me to say, God, I love you. God, I want more of you. And repeat that with all that you believe. And I did. So I'm about like nine or ten. No, I have no idea what I'm doing either. And all of a sudden, something just clicked. And then something, I had no idea what I was spouting came out, and it was power tongues. So that night, so we're still praising and worshiping. I have this gift now. And I go up to Pastor T, mostly to say thank you, and I pray. And in that moment, I don't, I, I don't remember what happens. I, like, blank out. And... I wake back up and I'm just kind of standing at the altar and I'm still wanting to give praise and worship. And I get home. And so the next day we get home and then my parents get pulled to the side by Pastor T. And I'm outside, I don't really know what's happening. I'm just trying to go home at this point, I'm tired. You know? <laughs> but correct me if I'm wrong, Pastor T, please. But um, the two things God did for me that night was one, gave me the power of tongues, and two, he gave me a prophetic message for him. And I believe it was over your family. And it was about, it was over his family. And I, and the thing is that I had no idea I had done that. So I just had people telling me for a long time, it's like, you got this incredible gift, you got something inside of you. I had no clue what they're talking about. 
So I remember we, the, so a little bit later in November, we go to kids' convention or whatever, and Pastor T had to come pick me up. And I remember in the van, he was telling me about his prayer journal and about the woman he wanted to marry. And it was someone with hair, it was, he told me about his hair color, height, and someone <laughs> wanted to sing, someone who could sing. And, <laughs> and I remember recently he said two out of three ain't bad, right? <laughs> but so for years I camp, I would go, you know, I would praise, I would cry with everybody, stuff like that. And, you know, kind of just like Rebecca said, go through the motions. And it really wasn't until camp of 2021. Because I was kind of like on and off in the present stuff like that. I was just like, oh, I don't care enough because like uh, I don't really want to set time away. And then I was praying over, I believe it was Lee, Lee Millington that year. And something in me was like, I love doing this. I love praying for people. And that was kind of like the first moment I realized how much I fell in love with worship. And then this year, I believe it was the day, it was night two. And he gave an altar call for mental change and freedom from stuff like that. And I kind of just ran up to the altar. And then in that moment, I was also praying, but then I was also worshiping. I was dancing. And so I'm right in front of the stage in front of Pastor Heather, Pastor Hope, and all of them. And they let the interns go. And then Pastor Aubrey comes up to me. I hadn't really been super emotional that whole week, but he, as soon as he started praying for me, I cried and I lost it. My hands were at my side, snot, he, he, tears, bad. So after that, Pastor Jack came up to me and he gave me a hug and he was praying and I lost it again. But so after that, I was, and then after that moment, I just had a smile on my face and I couldn't cry anymore, but I was just happy. It was just joy. And then the next night, I believe I was praying for a Joshua Culpepper. And we were praying, and I was talking to him, and then something happened, and he received the power of tongues too. And, and then I was also praying for James and then Lee also that night too, and Jonathan. And then I'm just like, I, this is where I was madly in love. And then on that same night, an intern came up to me, J Dylan, I believe. He came up to me, and he prayed, and he was like, you have an anointing you don't know about, and you just need to let it out. And I've also had been told about that prophetic message, but I never really believed it because I had no idea I had done it. I never really acknowledged it. I'm like, uh, well, I, there's no way I did that. I would have remembered. But it was in that moment where something kind of turned like a key that had like turned inside of me where I'm just like, I don't want to do anything different. I just want to pray and I want to worship with people. And that night, I remember I was going around and I was praying the next two nights, going around praying for people. And those people that I was praying for either received the power of tongues or got slain in the spirit. And they encountered God that night too. And I'm not saying this just because I'm like, oh, I can do that. But I'm saying this because God can move through any single one of you. No. And, and one thing I want to say to the youth is that you, if you guys had an encounter with God, not only that, do not be scared of him moving through you, especially at your age. And that's something that I've been telling myself for years now, but I never believed it until tonight. Not even tonight, but until camp. So, guys, please, I told you guys this once, but I'm going to say it again. Do not put those chains back on that he broke off. Don't do it. Because you're not going to go anywhere. Because there is so much freedom and there's so much joy when you're alive. And when you can move around and jump and get stupid like the rest of us, it's just fun. I want to say I love y'all. I don't care if it was your first time coming to camp, your third, or your tenth. I don't care. You guys came. You showed up. This is the best camp experience. I wouldn't change a thing. Thank y'all.
We still got a couple more to go. If y'all can hang in with us. I know, I, I know we still got more. If we could speed it up just a little, is that okay? We don't want to miss, we don't want to miss anybody's or have to cut anything short. So let's keep that in mind. But Caden, you want to come on up? You good? Hi. Um, there's a lot of people wanting this. All right. So before I start, uh, some of this stuff I haven't really talked to anybody about. So. <clears throat> At first, I was one of the kids that sat in the back and slowly made my way up. I remember just being sad and depressed, but I figured out that was just the devil trying to interrupt me and the Holy Spirit. But I didn't realize that then. <clears throat> so I really didn't know what to do, but Pastor Jack came up to me and laid hands on me and talked <laughs> and talked to me about things that I haven't told anybody. <laughs> and um, when he was praying over me, I just broke down in tears. Oh, there's. <laughs> I just broke down in tears, and I, was, and I was at the point where I knew I had to change and get those thoughts out of my head because I thought it would be better off if people were, if I was, um, I thought it would be better off for the people around me if I was gone, and I, and it got so bad I wrote everyone letters wrote everyone letters just in case something happened. But at church camp, I sat and thought of all the things I've been through and made it out of. And one time I was at my aunt's house. This was a couple years ago. Some of y'all might rem uh, remember. But I had a severe head injury. I had a concussion, brain bleed, fracture skull. They thought I broke my neck and my lower back. The whole right side of my body was paralyzed. And I got to... Uh, it got to the point where they had to call the chaplain, and a chaplain is someone that they call to pray and get ready for someone's death. But people prayed over me, and three days later, they did more scans, more tests, and my brain, my brain bleed was gone, my fracture skull healed, and I could move my body. <laughs> they said if I made it out, I would never be the same. And after I thought about that at church camp, I knew God had a plan for me. So I'm done with my, the old me, and I want to change. And Camp Jackson was just an amazing experience for me. I'll never know. Gordon, Tristan, you ready? Okay. okay. Galena, come on. thing before camp, just a little bit about my story. Uh, I was a player. I played church. I wanted to please everybody. I was a people pleaser. I didn't, I didn't want to lose friends because if I lost friends, I would lose people I love. Um, and I always felt so alone. 
I always thought I was a loner. And I always said to myself, why did God put me on this earth? Why? And I'll tell you one thing. I went to camp. I went to camp. And I never felt more loved at camp than I did anywhere else. I tried to find love at school. I tried to find love in relationships. You know what those got me? Heartbroken. Heartbroken. My, my biological father left me when I was a little kid. And I thought I couldn't make it out in this world. But you know who still loves me to this day? And I'm trying to make this short, but I just want y'all to know that God can save you like he did me. Even though I went to those mental facilities and I had to go the things that I didn't want to go through in my life. But God did those for me so I can be stronger than the devil. And I'll say, well, let me say one more thing before I just get off. I just want you to know you're not alone just because the devil puts that in your head because it takes one thought, like Pastor said, it takes one thought the devil puts in your head to say you're not alone. I mean, you are alone. And then God puts in your head you are not alone because when you're not alone, you feel much better. But when you are alone, the devil can just grab you right then and there and then whenever I've been alone in so many ways the devil snatched me up in two pieces and he had a hold on me for so long and I want y'all to know Camp Jackson helped me so much it's all because of him that urge in my throat to like start crying. I'm sorry. Um, my name is Aaliyah Lloyd and this was my very first year attending camp. A few weeks ago I started to return back to, or to return back to church after not coming for a while thanks to one Wednesday night. And that same Wednesday night my friends that are part of the youth told me I should go to Camp Jackson and I, end up, and I ended up going because I, sorry, hold on. <laughs> my heart's being so bad. But um, I ended up going because I knew I went and ended up there that night for a reason. I was actually so scared to go that Wednesday night because I knew I'd be new. And I knew there'd probably be people to judge me, but that never happened. But in the meantime, we're returning back to church. I've noticed a lot about how I started to reconnect with God and how the things around me has changed. These past days have been really life-changing because I've realized and learned so many things. This week at camp, I had no idea what to expect. I was told that this was just the beginning and that word from a friend has opened up my eyes. When I cried every night at camp and cried in my friend's arms, they held me while I cried and I broke down even more because I noticed that God brought those friendships to become closer. On Thursday night, June 29th, I felt God talk to me and I got laid down. And when people put their hands on me and prayed for me, I heard him talk and say more things to me. That whole night I cried and I cried not sad tears, but joyful tears. It felt like I was right with him. He told me that he will always care and love for me no matter what. And I just felt like I was there, but not there at all because it was so peaceful. It was something I've never felt before. To hear him say that to me changed me. Even though I can't gather much that happens after that, I feel more free and like a happy and brand new person. All the negative thoughts that were put in my mind and anxiety I had before this week is gone. So adding on to all this, my statement is that this experience will change me forever. And now I know there's way more to come in the future. And I'm, and I'm so
so glad she brought me to do this. And I also wanted to thank all the youth and pastors who got to see and be there with me for that experience. I truly love all of y'all because y'all have been there for me and spoke some greatly given advice to me. <laughs> thank you all so much. <laughs> Lexi? My name is Lexi Kent, and this is my first year going to camp. So for a little backstory, I was never much into church, and I never went to youth group. I went to I went to church some Sundays with my mom, but I was never a person that was like, let's go to church. And so when I went to this church one Wednesday night and got invited to camp, I was like, okay, that sounds fun, because through some of my friends that have went, uh, have said that camp was fun. And we got there Monday night, and one of my friends, I'm pretty sure it was Michaela. <laughs> Uh, who has been there was like prepare to cry and I was like it probably won't be that bad then I was going through the service that night and some people came around me and started saying stuff and praying for me and I was sitting there singing before I knew it my eyes were watering and my legs were shaking then that's when I realized how emotional it actually is and there are no words that can actually describe how I felt or what describes God coming into your life and just taking you in no matter how many times I think I have failed him in thinking that he would never want me as one of his children. But after this week, God has shown me that no matter what you have done or what you have been through, he is always there. He is always there when you feel most alone. And nothing can describe the amazing feeling I felt after Thursday night. My relationship with God was changed for the better. It made me realize that I need to start following his path that, and that he will never fail me and never not want me as one of his children. This whole week has allowed me to get closer to God, and I never knew how much he could possibly change me. And after this, I'm allowing him to take everything. I'm allowing him to have it all, the good, the bad, everything, because I know he wants me, and I know he has a plan, and I know he's going to help me through a lot of the stuff I have going on in my personal life with parents and my dad. And I know following in his path, I will never be alone. And this past week was indescribable and was so it was so wonderful and emotional, and everyone just being around you and praying around you and hugging you while you have that much emotion going through you is, is an experience I will never forget. And being in the presence of the Lord and surrendering to him is just so unforgettable and just so amazing. Pastor, would it be okay if we do one more? But then moving forward over these next few Sundays, can we have more of our students be able to come up and share? Is that okay? Okay. Is that okay, students? Y'all good? Joe, come on. Walker, so I'm a walk, but uh, <laughs> two years. Uh, so I'm gonna give you a little backstory. Uh, I've been growing up in this church my whole life and everything, knowing all the pastors for a while. But uh, in playing church, like all of them have said, I was playing church two years ago. Two years ago was when God miraculously changed me. But the way He changed me was some I never experienced. He told me. It was at Camp Jackson. I believe it was the second night. Three, three people. Two of them. I, two of them. I, one of them. I don't even know who it was. I don't even remember her name. But she came up to me and she said that God told me to speak some over you. And she told me that I was a leader and I was meant, and that I was meant to lead. Then Pastor Brooks. I didn't know him that well. He came over and told me that I was also a leader. And then Pastor Jack came and told me the same thing. And from that day forward, I was like, there's a reason why. There's a reason why God put me here, put me in this church, put me in the youth group. 
So anyway, but that was a little backstory. Um, jump going forward. This is my senior year, so this is my la my last year's camp as a student. And um. And uh, I didn't know what was gonna happen afterwards. I I came uh, coming up, and I told Pastor Jack, I was like, this week, I don't know what's gonna happen, but I'm just looking for clarity. I don't know what it is or wh what it is, but whatever it is, I'm just going to go and call out and ask for it. <sighs> Meanwhile, we were going to camp. The storm happened. A uh, tire popped, and I looked to Pastor Jack, and Pastor Jack looked to me, and we were like, something incredible is going to happen in our youth group this night or this week. And so we go, and first night was incredible. We're all in. I told James, we're going to go all in. We're going to dive head first. And we did. And people's lives got changed. Fear and depression turned into joy and happiness and peace. Second night, second night we go in. The second night we go in. And that's when he called. He's like, people who are, who are playing church, you need to come to the altar. And you need to really give it all to him. And ever since, and ever since then, that's what, like, hold on, I'm sorry. <laughs> so the second night we go in, we're pressing hard, but, uh, and then I'm starting to ask God, I'm like, God, what? What is it that you want me to do? What it, like, what's my future looking like? And he still, he, I feel like he didn't really give me anything like hard ground, which was fine. I'm like, God, I know that you have something for, in store for me. I don't know when it's going to be, but I know that you're going to answer. And so I start praying for the students and everything, letting them get closer to God because God's good. And they needed to know that he loves all of them. The third night happens. The third night happens again. And I believe that's when Pastor Jack, Pastor Jack came and prayed over it for me. And there was a whole bunch of doors that could have been open and that I could see myself going through. But Pastor Jack came to me and he's like, he, clo he told me, and I knew already, but I didn't want to believe it, but he told me a couple of doors that needed to be closed. That wasn't the right way. That wasn't what God had in store for my future. And I started bawling and crying for that because, and then that's when I came to Seven James. And then the final night, those three nights were incredible. And then the final night was when I fully pressed and I was like, God, whatever you have, Whatever you have in store for me, I'm going to give it to you all, whatever that may be. And we were praying for students. That was the healing night and anointing night. But I wasn't really thinking much on that. I was just thinking of, I was first thinking of the students who needed to be touched and who needed to be healed. But then I was, I don't remember who I was praying for, but I was praying for someone. And then all of a sudden, I felt something in my, felt something in my uh, heart. So I'm like, I didn't know what it was. So I turn around and I just start asking God, I'm like, God, what is it? And then Pastor T. Pastor T comes up to me and starts praying. I'm going to be honest, I don't know what he said. <laughs> but I don't remember him saying something just crying out and saying, God, just give him a glimpse of what you have in store, man. That's the only thing I remember. And I just opened my eyes and I, don't, I, I, I was on the ground. I, first time I ever got on the ground on slain. <laughs> but I was on the ground. I was, just, I was just, God, what do you want? And that's when, and that's when God, <laughs> I felt like God told me that he called me to be in the ministry and to, to be the light to the people who have nobody. People, people who need the love of God, who need to show, be shown the love of God. He told me that he wants to use me.
go. Those people, those kids, those youth, those adults, whoever they may be, can find him and know that he's the only way. And I just started smiling and overwhelmed. And then I think it was Pastor Wesley, he prayed for And I'm not going to lie, I'm pretty big. And he was about holding me like a baby because I could not get on my, I could not get on my, I could not hang on. I was surprised that he could. But, uh, <laughs> no, but, but finally, he, pray, I don't remember what he said either, but finally he prayed. And just like the overwhelming feeling, I'm like, okay. <laughs> he just pushed me. I just fell on my knees and started yelling and crying. I'm like, God, thank you. I said, God, thank you. And then I woke up. All right, I didn't wake up, but I got back up. <laughs> I got back up. I'm like, I'm like, I, he knew, he knew I was looking. I don't know if he did, but I was looking for Pastor Jack because I wanted to, him to tell him because I know he was believing just like me that I was going to find clarity in what my future is going to be. <laughs> I thought, sorry, man, he came walking up to me. He knew I needed to talk to him. And I told him what God told me. I, I probably had to tell him a thousand times because I was in tears and I couldn't, he couldn't hear me. <laughs> but he started praying, and he had the cup of oil because it was anointing, so he would, like, tap and, like, anoint kids. He told, he came up to me and started praying for me, and he said, he said, I've never done this before, and I'm not doing this to glorify me or to glorify you, but I'm doing this because God told me to do this. He told me. He told me that I was a priest. <laughs> and back back, uh, back in the Old Testament, I believe, if he explained to me this. He's like, in order to tell that people, in order for people to understand and tell that you were a priest, what they did is they would grab oil, they would get oil and pour it all over your head <laughs> and come back into the. And when they walked out the doors, everybody saw and came out and knew that you were anointed and knew that you were called to be a priest. <sighs> so he said, he said, I'm about to do the same thing. So he said, mighty man of God, raise your hand up. <laughs> I cry out. <laughs> and he takes the cup of oil and doesn't just tap it. He takes the cup of oil and pours the whole thing. <laughs> Pour the whole thing over my head. He said, he said, Joe, you are anointed and you are a priest. Go show people what God has done, but also go show people his love because he's the only one that matters. And students, students, I'm talking to you. What happened at camp? was incredible. But let's come back. That fire that's burning, let's come back and let's inflame this whole church. Let's I, don't, let don't let anybody tell y'all y'all are too young. God did some in each and every single one of y'all's lives and he, he isn't even done with y'all yet. There's a reason why y'all got sent to camp and a reason why y'all come back happy and free of depression, free of anxiety. Go be the light to these adults and to those kids so this, so this church can be inflamed and can chase after God and break through, break through all them chains that are holding the people back, break through the walls. Go be that, go be that light to the people who need it. <sighs> y'all will join us if you're not already standing can you stand for me we have just heard a lot of testimonies
And something that we preached to our kids this week at camp, and as we walked into this moment, if God can do it for you, God can do it for each and every single person here in this church today. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, can we lift our hands for a moment? There is no such thing as a junior Holy Spirit. There's no such thing as a junior God. That the same God that placed his hand upon their lives today, the same Holy Spirit that filled them and moved through their lives this week is the same God who wants to touch you in your situation right now. There's some of you in this room who are dealing with that anxiety, who are dealing with that depression. And as Pastor said earlier, a lot of times we just like, well, we don't deal with that. No, we just don't want to admit it. And can I tell you today, these students are ready to lay their hands on you. And they're believing that the same God that touched them is the same God that is going to touch you today. Like they ain't coming and asking God, I hope you do it. They say, no, I've seen it. I've tasted and I've seen that the Lord is good. So maybe that's you today. Well, can I tell you, we're believing that in this room here in a couple moments, you're about to find your deliverance. Maybe there's some of you in here who some like these kids. You're like, you know what? I'm just caught up in doing this thing week after week after week. And I love what Zion said. He said, there just comes a point, quit asking for it. And sometimes you just got to lay on your face and say, Jesus, you can have it all. So some of y'all in this room today, y'all might need to find yourself at this altar. You might need to find your spot in this place where you can look back and say, my Lord, on July 2nd, at 12 whatever time it is, laying on that floor that I met Jesus and he filled me like no other. There's some testimonies as well that weren't even shared this week, but that will be shared. That for seven years seeking after the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I would dare say there were some moments in his life he said, I guess this just isn't for me. But can I tell you, we stood there, we prayed together, that man got filled and his life has changed forever. And maybe that's you. Maybe you're the one you've been asking for the baptism for a while. Maybe you're like some of them who feel like they haven't been seen. Or some of them who even mentioned that they felt abandoned by parents. They just feel lost. I spoke to Steph earlier. Where are you at? I spoke to Steph earlier. And I wanted to tell him, like, your story needs to be shared. There's so much more to it. Can I share what you said to me that night? He wrapped me up, and he said, Pastor Jack, I'm scared. He said, I'm scared. I love my dad, but I don't want to become my dad. His dad really ain't in his life. In that moment, and as we're driving, God began to speak. I believe there's people in this room that have hurt from their fathers that instead of dealing with it, you've held on to it for years. And I'm talking like you on up there in age, too. Like, like there are things that God wants to do in your life, but you're too busy holding on to past hurts from what a father did to you or from what a, from a mother did to you that you're unwilling to let go and let God in. And as Katie said, there's some doors that need to be opened that until you invite him to come do it for you, it ain't going to open. So one more time with every head bowed and every eye closed. I ain't going to say anything specific, but if you're in this place today and you just need prayer, or you just want prayer, I'm going to ask you to come now. Come on. We're about to set our students loose. We're going to have our leaders loose here in a second. Come on. I'm not going to beg you to come. I just want you to know that if you want it, you'll get it. That's the God we serve. So come on. you're still in your seat, I want you to extend your hand this way because we believe in it. We're believing that it's about to happen. We're believing that whatever it is that they're down here praying for, that chains are being broken. That chains are being broken. Chains are being broken. Lord, the things in which we need to let go, we're letting go. 
Doors that need to be busted open, Lord, are being busted open. Can we have some faith today and believe that God is who he says he is? Come on.